everyone, it's me, Melissa Howley, and today is another tutorial video. But this one's a little special because I've been on a mission. Now you may have noticed that I haven't posted recently, but it's all with good reason because I've been busy searching for the best solution for your Color Street solids. So I was one of the lucky few that were able to attend the Color Street cruise and it was a blast. I had such a good time, but I used my time wisely. I made sure that all the different stylists that I spoke with, I asked them what are their best tips and tricks for applying solids because I know many of you struggle with solids. I know I've done a solids video before and that's the way that works well for me, but I wanted to give you guys some options because what works for me doesn't mean that's going to work for you. So that's the focus of today's video. Now I'm also excited because this particular nail set that we're going to be using is is also kind of special. It's a dupe for the only nail polish that Queen Elizabeth will wear. Yes, long live the queen. So today we're going to be wearing Soleil Ballet, which is this beautiful pale pink shade. It's also perfect for the Queen of England, um, who actually wears Essie's ballet slipper, which was the inspiration for this color. And it's also perfect for those brides out there. So if you know someone getting married, please send them my way. I'm happy to send them a sample and see if Color Street might be something that they would like to wear. And also we could also do up their entire bridal party. So anyway, today I'm going to be applying Soleil Ballet, a solid, and I'm going to be showing you three different methods for applying your solids so that you, hopefully, after watching this video, will also get the same results. But wait, that's not all, guys. Color Street has two main launches each year. They also have mini launches throughout the year. You get the holiday sets too, and then you get some other special ones. Obviously the ones that we do for different causes come out throughout the year as well. But our two main launches, as I said, are fall and spring, and spring is right around the corner. We're having a launch on March 19th, and Color Street has let stylists know what 16 of those nail sets are, so that's actually only half of them. I haven't been able to see all of them yet, so I'm really excited to see the rest. But if you would like a sneak peek of the 16 shades that will be available on March 19th, then all you have to do is go to sneakpeek.sassygirlnails.com and I will send you some pictures through Messenger. Also, if you wanna shop for any of those nail sets, they will be released on the 19th. I don't know what time, but if you join me on my Facebook group, I will definitely post that information there. And I can't wait to see what other nail sets Color Street has coming our way. All right, well that's it guys. Let's dive in to mastering your solids application. Okay, before we get started, I just wanted to take a minute to really share with you some of the things I do to prep my nails before I apply my Color Street. I think this is really important, especially if you're going to be using solids, because solids are kind of like that little black dress they just kind of show everything. So these are the, some of the tools that I use, and I'm just gonna quickly run through them for you before we get started. So the first thing I like to do is I always wanna push back my cuticles. Now I like to use one of these very inexpensive orange sticks or a wooden cuticle pusher. There's also metal ones that you could use, and those are fine too, but these are gonna be a little bit more safe for your nails. Um, so this is what I would recommend, and then also, the best time to push back your cuticles is right after the shower because you want your cuticles to be nice and soft when you're pushing them back. Now, if you wanna push your cuticles back and it's not right after the shower, maybe they're not quite soft, you can also use products like this. This is Sally Hansen's Instant Cuticle Remover. I like to use this. And basically all you do is you just apply a little bit to the cuticle and just wait for it to soften that cuticle before you push back the cuticle. And so I just, before my application, I just go through and I push back the cuticles on each of my nails. I also like to shape my nails. So you can use any type of nail file that you like. I like to use these crystal nail files because of the fact that you can actually shape the nail in multiple directions. If you're using more of an emery board like this to shape your nails, you really only want to shape them in one direction. If you're So you just go back and forth in one direction. If you're going back and forth, it can actually make the tip of your nail bed ragged which can cause it to split later on. With a crystal nail file, it actually seals the tip of your nail bed, so you don't have that issue. So both are great options, just as long as you know how to use them. And then buffing. Now, I don't buff my nails between every application. I might buff my nails once a month or even less than that, but if I'm doing a solid, I do like to buff my nails because of the fact that I have ridges on my nails. So I like to buff them out because those ridges will become way more apparent on a solid than they are on a glitter. But you wanna just be aware of some things with the buffers. Now, when you're buffing your nails, especially if it's because you have ridges, usually the low points of those ridges are lower than you actually want your nail bed to be. So if you're buffing away all of those ridges, you're actually probably going to be seeing that your nail is gonna be thinner than you want and could cause breakage later on. So I like to just very gently buff my nails and then I don't do it that often between applications. 
And then we're gonna talk about this little guy right here. This is gonna be your best friend when dealing with Color Street solids. Um, so we'll be using this throughout the day, but this is what I'm gonna use later on after I apply the Color Street to really press it down and make sure there's no rippling or buckling on the sides. So I've already gone through the effort of shaping my nails, pushing back my cuticles, and also buffing them. But guys, if nail care is a video that you'd like to see me produce, I'm happy to do that for you. Just comment below. And if I see a lot of people asking for a video on how I actually prep my nails in depth, then I will be happy to do that for you guys. Okay, today's video, as I mentioned earlier, is going to be using this very pale pink shade called Soleil Ballet. So pretty. And I think we're at a point where we can get started. So I'm gonna open up the package. And another thing you wanna be aware of too that's a little bit different for all of us is the fact that we all have different levels of oils on our nail beds. So if you have very oily nail beds and you're finding that your polish is lifting, one tip that you might wanna do before cleaning off your nail beds is to actually use acetone. If you put acetone on your nails, it is gonna dry it out a little bit. Now I try to stay away from acetone because I don't want my nails dried, but again, if you find that you have very oily nail beds, that might be a great solution for you. So I always use a prep pad. Now if you find that you are someone who has really dry nail beds, maybe, um, first of all, if you're finding you're having issues with your nail beds, I would definitely suggest finding a non-acetone remover. That would be the first step. But if you still also find that you have dry nails, you might try skipping this step. Again, you wanna make sure you have clean nails though. And also, if you're just using soap, regular soap, sometimes those add oil to your nail beds as well. So sometimes you just wanna be aware that clean nails with soap won't take away all the oils that you're trying to get rid of with these prep pads. But again, if you're someone who just happens to have very dry nail beds, this could be a step that you might try to skip and see if that works better for you. So I'm gonna use the prep pad. We get two with our strips and I always clean off my nail beds. And then I always, because I'm gonna be touching the nail strips, I always clean off the pads of my fingers too. All right, I'm gonna open up the package, and right here on the edge, there's always this little tear area, so it makes it easy to open. And I'll take out my strips. And here's the 16 strips that we have. So there's eight per hand. And throughout this demonstration, I'm gonna show you three different ways to apply solids. Because again, if you're finding solids to be a challenge, there's more than one way to put them on. So I'm hoping that one of these will work best for you. So for me, I'm gonna start off with my pinky and I'm just gonna do it the traditional way. This is the one I'd like to use for my pinky. And our strips are, are protected by a cover. So I'm just gonna remove the top clear coat cover. And then there's also a backing. So where that silver and that white meet, I just lift that away. And that's gonna expose your nail strip. Just be aware that if you're in a cold environment, because right now it's winter time here, we've got like mountains of snow outside, the cold does affect your nail strip. So if they're not as pliable as you're used to, you might wanna warm them up a little bit. You could warm your strips up in your hands before you open them. And that's a, a, a good way to make them more pliable. I just wanted to throw that tip out to you as well because if you're someone who always has cold hands, that can affect your application. So I'm gonna take my nail strip and I like to hold it right from the middle because it allows me the most flexibility when applying this strip. I'm just gonna place it close to that cuticle line. Now, if you place it down and it's a little wonky like I just did, meaning it's not straight, you can lift it right up, put it back down. What's really important is that you don't put the strip on your skin. You wanna make sure that it's on the nail. If it's on your skin or on top of your cuticle that you didn't push back, that's when you can find lifting later. So now that I like my placement, I'm gonna to commit to it. To commit to it, I like to just go back and forth at the base with my finger, up the center. Because it's a solid, you really wanna give it a lot of attention with smoothing it out all the way as you go up. And then there's a few different methods you can use to remove the excess. Today I'm gonna choose to save the extra strip. I'm gonna try to do two nails with one strip. So I'm just gonna fold it gently over the nail. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a tug because I wanna make sure that there's no buckling on the side. 
So a little bit of a tug, not too much. You don't want to rip the nail strip, which you can do. A little bit of a tug when I go over and then see how I'm going under the nail with my thumb? That's where I want to perforate it, is underneath the nail. So it's actually still covering that tip. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just giving it a little bit of a tug over the nail and that's where I perforate it. But still there's some buckling going on. So that's why with the solids, I really wanna make sure that I focus on that. So I'm going to grab this plastic cuticle pusher. And what's nice is it's nice and soft and squishy. This is gonna be huge and just smoothing out right on those edges. So you wanna smooth it out. All right, so we're getting close. There's still some areas that we wanna do some cleanup to. So one thing is that if your nail strip's a little bit wider than your nail, which is fine. I always say wide is better than not wide enough, right? Because you wanna make sure you're always covering that nail. If it's a little bit over, that's also where you might see some buckling. So I'm gonna use a cuticle stick to really make sure there's no excess that I need to get rid of on the sides. So I'm just going on the side of the nail with the cuticle stick and then I'm just kind of pushing it under to perforate the side as well with my cuticle stick. And again, just to get rid of those buckles using this to really smooth it out. Take your time with solids and really smooth it out. This is gonna give you the best results. All right, so nail number two, let's talk about a different technique. Another way people swear by is to double up on your solids. So instead of having just the one layer, they like to have two and it just seems to be easier application for getting out those bubbles. So I'm gonna do that for this nail right here. I'm gonna use the leftover from my pinky. And apply that to my ring finger. And then it's the same thing, just really smoothing it out, tugging it, and then removing the excess. Smoothing it out, tugging it, and then removing the excess. Now if I were to use a darker color, what I might do is for that first layer, just have it up a little bit higher above the cuticle line, so that way the layers aren't exactly directly over each other. There's the first layer and then the second layer still hits the actual nail um, right near the cuticle line. But because this one is such a, a pale shade, I think that you'll see that. So I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna do that in this case. But if I were, again, using two different layers and they were of a darker shade, I would definitely offset them a little bit just so it's not quite so thick right where the nail is. Before I actually apply the another strip, I just wanna make sure I also smooth that out too. and now I'll apply the second layer. So. Now just obviously, just be aware that by adding another layer, many times it will change your color. So by having two, because this is a little bit transparent, it's gonna be a little bit of a darker shade pink, which is also nice to have that option as well. and then just really smooth it out. Give it a tug, but not too much. You don't wanna break it. Fold it over and then remove the excess. And the same thing on this side. Oops, I actually broke it before I could tug it. That's okay because it's broke above the nail.
So you can see I'm really using a bit of force as I just use this tool to smooth out the sides. Okay, so there they are, two of them finished. Now notice that there was definitely a darker shade of pink on the double layer than there was with the single layer. So let's look at another option. Maybe you don't want to have a deeper shade. Maybe you like the original shade, but you still want to have another option for protecting that solid because it is a thinner coat than say our glitter. So maybe if you're having issues with it not holding up, or maybe you just happen to have thinner nails that bend, which can also lead to issues such as cracking. Another option for you is this product right here called Clear as Day. So Clear as Day is just as it says. It's totally a clear product. So it's like a clear coat, an extra layer to protect your nail strips. But what's great about Clear as Day is you actually get double the amount. So when I open it up, you'll see that it comes with two full sleeves. So one sleeve, just like we had before, will be 16 strips. So you're actually getting 32, which is a really great deal um, as a top coat. So I'm gonna use Clear as Day now to layer on, on top of my next finger. And then if you like your placement, just commit, just going back and forth at the base, up the center, and then really smoothing out those sides. So important with solids. And then to remove the excess, as I said before, I like to give it a nice, you can even, if there's a little buckle, you can even lift it up to then really straighten it out. Give it a little tug as you go over and then under the nail to remove the excess. Really smooth it out. Then you can see I do have a little excess over here on the sides. So I just want to use this to push it under the nail and then I can file it off later after it's cured. Okay, so here's a clear as day strip. I'm just gonna remove the bottom. Now one thing about overlays is that normally I have no problem touching the back, but it's possible to have fingerprints show through. And if that's something that you're concerned with or has been bothering you, um, I usually don't worry about it too, too much. Another method is to use the paper strip that you just take off and put that underneath. So it's gonna give you an option to have something that's keeping it rigid while you apply it, but you don't actually have to touch the bottom of the nail strip. And then if you like your placement, again, back and forth, up the center and smooth out the sides. You guys know the drill, it's rinse and repeat. Then since I'm not gonna keep the excess on this one, I'm just going to pinch it and remove it. Sorry, I'm a little off camera there, but just smoothing it out. So it's the same, same drill, and then I'm just gonna use that tool to smooth it out. So it gives you that same extra layer of protection for your strip but it makes it so that you have the same color. The thing that some people really love about Clearest Day is it does give that little bit extra shine to your polish, but if you don't like the extra shine, you just want it so that you have a stronger nail because of the thickness, you could actually put Clearest Day underneath your polish as well. That's another option. All right, so one last thing I wanna talk about is uh, a question that I get all the time, and that's, can I put a clear coat on top of my polish? And the answer is you can. Um, some people really swear by this product right here, Saint Schwitz which you can get from Amazon. You can also find it at your drugstore. I have it, I are hardly ever use it. I do think that clear as day is a much better option. It just holds up so much better for me. What I do find when I use a clear coat like this, that I tend to sometimes get more lifting around the edges uh, when I use a polish on top. So you can definitely try it out and see what works best for you. One thing I will let you know though, if you are gonna use a solution like this, a wet, 
polish on top of our color street. You want to make sure that your color street is fully dried. You want to make sure it's been cured to your nail. A lot of people will actually wait to add the clear coat until the next day. Just because if this is still drying, it's still curing to your nail, and then you apply something wet on top of it, it can actually shrink the polish. And then you're gonna expose your tip, and it's just not gonna be great. So again, this is an option that you can use. I definitely think that Clear as Day is works much better. They just work well together. But feel free to try it out. Okay guys, that's it. I hope some of these tips help you as you apply your Color Street solids. If you have any tips of your own, please share them. We'd love to see them in the comments. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you wanna see a sneak peek of our spring lineup, again, the website to go to is just sneakpeek.sassygirlnails.com. The information will all be sent to you through Messenger. And as you look through those images, if you're like, I want this, I need that, I want this, I want that, there's also ways for you guys to earn free nail sets. One is to host a nail bar. If you're interested in doing that, I'm happy to work with you on doing an online nail bar and also becoming a stylist. We've got lots of perks being a stylist. If you're interested in learning if this opportunity might be right for you, just let me know, I'm happy to help. Thanks you guys so much. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel because next week we're gonna look at taking your Soleil Ballet from queenly to sassy. All right guys, see you soon, bye.